Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorial series on quantum statistics. This is multiplicity rule number five. The previous video is rule number four, and this is lecture number nine or tutorial number nine. Now, just just to say it, I've said in the past that these rules or the way I've broken them down is arbitrary. I've just chosen to do it that way for convenience. So you won't go finding rule number four if you if you Google it. Let's put it that way. So now we're starting to get into very uh, applicable statistics or multiplicity rules. So let's say we have n sub s particles and we want to put them into g sub s boxes or states. Alright? Where there is no restriction on the number per state. Okay, so if there's no restriction on the number per state, we know immediately that we're talking about either classical particles or bosons. If they're distinguishable, well then we're talking about classical particles. And if they're indistinguishable, we're talking about uh, we're talking about bosons. So in this case, I'm going to say we're talking about distinguishable particles. So that should tell you that we're looking at the largest multiplicity because we know that where they are distinguishable, we have the largest multiplicity, and this is the largest entropy. Okay, because we know that the um, the entropy s is equal to Boltzmann's constant times the natural logarithm of the multiplicity. Look, that shouldn't that might be new to you, but hopefully it isn't. It's not very important anyway for this particular uh, this for this particular video. So let's look at it. Right, let's say for example, let's say we're looking at the eighth macro state. So we're talking about n sub 8, that's the, that's the number of particles we put into the 8th macro state. And let's say we put in 10 particles. Okay? And in the 8th macro state, let's say we have, let's say we have 12 microstates. Okay? So there are plenty of ways of visualizing it, and in a previous video I did it in a couple of ways. But let's say there's the first this is this this s is equal to one, s is equal to two, the whole way up to s is equal to eight, and there s is equal to s. All right. So in the eighth, the eighth macro or in the eighth macro state, we have twelve microstates: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There are our that's g sub eight is equal to twelve. And into it, I'm going to put n sub 8 is equal to 10 particles. So I'm going to put 10 particles into 8 microstates. In the uh, 10, sorry, 10 particles into 12 microstates in the 8th macro box. <laughs> so uh, if you really want, I suppose you could put a large box out here and say this is the total. So I don't know, that might be confusing. Hopefully it's not too confusing. Okay, so let's go. So we have n sub 8 is equal to, how do we talk about n sub 8? Well, we have 10 particles, so it's equal to particle 1 plus particle 2 plus particle 3 plus particle 4 the whole way up to particle, particle 8. And we know that there are 12 microstates. There's microstate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There is uh, number 12, t uh, 11, 10, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. All right. So I want to put each of these particles here into each of these in, into some of these boxes here, where they are distinguishable and there is no restriction on how many particles can go into each box. Well, then look at particle 1. I know I've written P here quite poorly. Well, particle 1, well, he, he could go in here, or he could go in here, or he could go into any one of these. No problem. So let's say particle 1 has G sub S is equal to 12 options, choices, of where to go. Well, then look at particle 2. Well, particle 2 comes along and he says, well, I, it, it doesn't matter what particle 1 did because we are, we are, non-interacting. So he also can go, I don't know, he can go to one, two, three, four, five, he can go wherever he likes also. So 
So particle 2 comes along and he also has g sub s is equal to 12 choices. And you should be able to see that in general particle s has g sub s choices. So every one of the particles has g sub s choices. So the total number of combinations then you get is by multiplying them all together. So you have to multiply all of these g sub s's together. Well how many times have you to multiply them? n sub s times. So g sub s to the power of n sub s is equal to our multiplicity. Okay? So each of those particles can be put in any one of the g sub s states. So there we go. Now, so just to rewrite that then, to rewrite that, so each macro state number s with n sub s particles. Oh, I know I'm writing at an angle there. With n sub s particles and g sub s microstates. Okay. Has g sub s to the power of n sub s multiplicity for each macro box for each macro box. So then if you wanted to get the total multiplicity of everything we have to multiply g1 times n sub 1 times g2 times n sub 2 times g3 times n sub 3 the whole way up to g sub s times n sub s. Now from the previous video you should know the shorthand of writing this. For sigma means addition, pi means multiplication. So that means the omega total or the total multiplicity, if that is omega, I still haven't checked it out, is pi over s and g sub s to the n sub s. And you should know that that's quite, or should seem that that's quite a large number, because that's in fact what it is. Okay, so that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and if you're in a good mood, please click on an ad.